Would you really like to know exactly how Wordwall works? This is a video that's gonna go from the beginning, the basics, right up to advanced level. Wordwall is not a particularly difficult tool and recently I've been doing some consultancy work with them so I know the technology really well. It's gonna include all the latest updates, including the audio feature that's now available. What I'm gonna do in this video is start by introducing word walls, showing you some examples, showing you how to create word walls, how to set word walls for your students to do. But then I'm gonna go on to more advanced features like using the templates like changing the visual look of the word wall, the settings, making use of the audio, the community option. And then I'm gonna show you some, finally, some really clever tricks to speed up the process of creating your word walls. This is complete training in Word Wall 2023. I've also put some chapters in so you can jump to the different sections if you are a user of Word Wall, but you wanna learn some of the advanced features. Really hope you like the video, and as always, if you do, please like it, please share it with other teachers, love to know your comments, and of course, join me on my YouTube channel. Let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is just look at a few word walls. Notice how many word walls are being created. 51 million already and the number is going up really quickly. This has become an incredibly popular technology, particularly uh, when it comes to literacy, language learning, but now they're also bringing in several maths activities. So let's have a quick look at a few activities. If we click on create activity, you'll see that there are really a lot of different activity types that you can create on this one site. In fact, there are over 30 games, I think 34, 35 games, including some around maths. If we come up to the top here and click on my activities, I'm just gonna quickly show you a couple of activities. The first one I'm gonna show you is a simple gap fill activity. If we click on this one here, in this game, if we click on start, what you notice is that you've got this text here and you have to drag the correct word in. And in a minute I will show you how I made this game and you'll see that actually it's very easy. Once I've dragged in the words, I can click on submit answers and it will give me immediate feedback to tell me if I have got the answers correct or incorrect. Now let's look at another activity. In this one, what we do is a matching game. Uh, this is basically a translation between English and Polish. So it's just matching sentences. Now notice that we can go full screen. And all I have to do in this particular one is just drag in what I believe is the translation for the word. Simple as that, very easy. Now it could be just one word, or it could be quite a long sentence, as you can see here. So you can use Word will in quite advanced classes and again once you finish you just submit gives you if the answers are correct or incorrect uh, etc. We'll just look at one more activity type you'll see lots more activities as I show you how to make them. If we click for example on this one here all the students have to do in this particular game called Famous Buildings is to read the word here and then find the correct um, basically the correct description. So they would drag that correct one into that. And then the Versailles Palace, which is the second one here. And again, we would need to find the correct description of that palace. And it would be this one here, etc. So the idea in this particular one is that you're matching uh, the simply the definition of the place with the place itself. Now, incidentally, if we was to look on how I made this game, you'll see it was very, very easy. I just wrote a quick dis description and then the answer. A quick description and then the answer. So you can see that actually making the games is very, very easy. And that's what we're gonna look at now. So if we wanna create a game, all we do is click on create activity. I'm gonna start with a really simple one, which is called random wheel. This is really nice if you are perhaps starting with a new class of students. I'm just gonna click here and I'm gonna call this one meet your student, students. And all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna write in some questions. Now to save time, I'm gonna stop the video. 
So I've written in the questions, very simple, and I just click on done. The game is instantly ready. I click on start. This is a great uh, game to use in the classroom with your students, particularly at the beginning of the course. You need to project this so that the students see this screen, and then you can spin the wheel. A question will be selected. And then the students can talk in pairs or in groups for one minute on that topic. And then after one minute, stop the activity or two minutes, stop the activity, eliminate that question because now they've already talked about that and then spin again. It's a really nice activity as a way of getting students to meet each other. Really nice activity, uh, particularly in the classroom. This one works really well. Let's create another game. So we we'll click on create game. This time we'll do something very simple because I just want to show you something. What I want to do in this one is that I'm going to put here, um, uh, for example, we're going to match um, the name and the capital. So the city and the capital. So we're going to write London and then we're going to write England, which is the actual country. Okay, can we do Madrid and we'll do Spain. We'll just do a couple more. Remember, I can then do, for example, here, if I wanted to, I can click here and I'm going to do Paris and I'm going to do France. Remember, I can either use this for quite long sentences, higher level or lower levels. If I want to add more items, I just click here. Simple as that. I'm going to do Rome and then I'm going to do Italy. So very simple way of working. Now, if I want to include the audio, I have to click here. And you can see that the, it's picked up the text. It's picked up the word uh, London. I need to generate the audio. London. And then click OK. And I'm going to do the same to the Madrid. Notice it's picked up the word. It automatically picks it up. I generate it. In fact, I'm going to change this and use a female voice. And then I'm going to click Generate. Madrid. And then I click OK. I'll do the same for Paris. I'll use the male voice. Paris. Again, always need to generate first and then click, and at this one I'm going to change to female. Remember to generate. Rome. And then click OK. So now this activity, and we're just going to call this capitals, this activity has also got audio. And if we click on done, this is a very basic matching activity, and we were to start to do this activity, notice as we click on the word to drag it in. Rome. It will actually produce the, the, the actual word. London. Madrid. Paris. Really nice activity, very quick, and again, it's quite nice that we can now add in this audio feature. Now I'm going to show you one more activity to create, just to give you a few more ideas. So we're going to click on Create Activity, and for this one, we're going to do Unjumble. And I'm going to click here, and I'm just going to write a few phrases that I want the students to unjumble. So what I'm going to do for this one, is I'm just going to write a few phrases about myself to make it easy. Again, I'll stop the video while I write the phrases. So I've written three sentences about myself. Obviously, I could add more sentences. I'm going to click here on Done. I want you to notice something. There is no audio option for this game. Some games offer audio. Other games do not offer an audio option. I click on Done in this game. And in this game, what you have to do, you have to unjumble the sentences. So this could be obviously on any topic. This is very good for very high level. So this would Russell, or so Russell, yeah, lives in Poland at the moment. And then it would move on to the next question. So how do you share these games when you've created them? How do you share the games with the students? If you want to do something a little bit more game-based, perhaps students competing with each other, then I would recommend Kahoot. And on the screen now, there's a video that takes you through Kahoot 2023, right from the beginning, focusing on the free tool. You might find that useful. To share a game with your students, you need to click on Set Assignment. Click on this button here. Now, I always ask to enter the name. You can leave it anonymous, but I like my students to enter their name. And I like to show the answers at the end, and I also like to give them the option to start again if they want to replay the game. Um, I can set a deadline if I'm going to leave this game open for a specific amount of time. 
Uh, normally, obviously, I'm often using these games in Zoom, so I share the link for the students to play immediately. Once I'm ready, you also do have the option to share in Google Classroom. I click on Start, and then I copy this link, and I share that with the students. I might put it into Moodle or in, onto, for example, into the Zoom chat or into the chat in, for example, if I was using Microsoft Teams or something. I can just share the link. The students click on the link, and then they can play the game. Now, if I'm in the classroom, I also have the option here to click on this button. And then the students with their telephones, with their smartphones, would need to take or image capture this, just to literally to open up their camera, and it will then immediately use this QR code to open the game so that they can then play it in their or on their smartphone. So you do have the option of using this in class if you choose this option here. Notice too that you can embed this activity anywhere. So for example, if I use the iframe option and click on copy, I could now paste that and add it into Moodle or add it into Blogger or add it into Google Sites. Let me quickly show you. So if I wanted to embed this game into Google Sites, for example, and most other systems will work in the same way, I just double click here on the screen, click on embed, click on embed code, paste in the embed code, click on next, and there we are. That game will now be added in to the screen, okay? So that the students can do the activity. So this is a really easy way to share the games that you make either in the classroom, to put into a website, or to share the link with the students, particularly if you're working in Zoom. Just a super, super quick break from the video. If you are enjoying this video, please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Loads more free videos. You can access this menu system at the top or just go through the stuff that's on the front page. It's got the most popular stuff. And also at the bottom, you can find my blog. And just one little thing. If you sign up to the newsletter at the moment, there is a 14-part video course in using uh, technology in education. It's completely free, there are no tricks, and of course you'll also get updated on my latest blog post, the free webinars that we run, the online courses, and of course any new videos that I release. Right, let's get back to this video. Now once the students play the game, you get instant feedback. So if you come over to my, if you come over to my results, and you can see here all the games, and I can see exactly how many people have played the game. And if I click here, for example, it will show me the results. It will show me that I had 17 students. It will show me that actually quite a lot of the students got many of the questions wrong, so I probably need to go back and do this again. And it will give me a breakdown of which questions were the most difficult. So for example, question number five, there were 15 mistakes. Uh, and then it gives me the names of all the students and the number of correct and number of incorrect. So I get an instant breakdown of the results. If I come back and look at, again, another example of some results, I can scroll down here. I've got some quite big classes. So for example, here I had 70 students. I can click, I can see the number of students, I can see which questions people got correct, which ones they got wrong. So for example, questions four and five, there were 18 mistakes. And I get a breakdown of the students' names, how many they got correct, how many incorrect, and how long they took. So this is really useful, formative information, really helps me to understand, are the students following me? I particularly like using um, things like WordWall uh, for the flipped classroom. So getting the students, for example, to watch a video at home or listen to a podcast or read an article and then do a couple of activities to check, are they following? Did they follow the video? Did they follow the podcast, etc.? But these results are very, very useful. Okay, so we've looked at the basic features. We've looked at making a WordWall, sharing it with students to do. We've looked at a number of different types of WordWalls. What I want to do now is move on to some of the more advanced features in WordWall. 
third wall, for example, adding audio, for example, using the community, for example, how you can use the templates, how you can change a game with just a few clicks of a button, or the super quick way of making flashcards, making games in Wordwall that people often don't realize that you can do. So this part is certainly for more advanced users of Wordwall and those who have learned the first part and know it now really well. Let's get started. Now, there are actually a number of quite advanced features in WordWall, and I'm going to show you a few of them now, uh, the really interesting ones. I'm going to click on My Activities, and for this activity, I'm going to work with this one here, Famous Buildings. Now, if we play this game, it's a very simple game. You've already seen it before. You simply have to drag in the correct uh, word next to whatever one you think is the correct answer. Very simple, okay? But we can completely change this game with just a few clicks. If we come over to the right here and it says switch template, and I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna change this for find the match. So I'm gonna play a completely different game but with the same content. So I click here and now we have a new game. But not only that, before I play it, I'm gonna save it as a new game. So I'm gonna click on edit content and then duplicate. And now we have a new game. So I'm, this one's going to be um, read and choose because the game is completely different now. You'll see when I play it, it's not the same game anymore. So I've given it a new title. I'm going to come down here and click on done. I now have a new game. Let's play this game. The way that this game works now is that it comes across on the screen, Big Ben, and then I have to click on the correct word and then it moves on to the next one. So without me doing any work, it's very, very quickly changed the game for me using the same content, but in a completely different way. And this option to switch to different game types is really useful because you can make some content, but then have three or four different games based around the same content. Now it's also possible to change the theme of a game and make it look very different. So for example, this one here, if I wanted to change it and perhaps to change it to look like here, like a wooden desk, then I can click here and now it's the same content, the same game, but the visual look is completely different, okay? So you do have that option as well to play the game and but change the actual look of the game completely. It's very quick to do. You're just using the different templates that are optional and allow you to play the game in a very different way. This can be nice if you're working with younger learners, for example. Now you can also change the settings. So if we come down here below the theme, you also have the option to change the font sizes as well. If you want to use a different type of font site, you can do that. But if we come down below, we have also a few interesting options here. For example, we can have, have a countdown or count up. We also can decide how many lives. So for example, I might say only two lives. So you can only make two mistakes. I could also, for example, instead of waiting for the students to answer, I could give them a certain amount of time to answer. So I could say, okay, the speed is gonna be two. Two is not too fast. And I'll also keep these two settings on as well. It's a good idea to shuffle the questions. Now, if I click on apply to this activity, you'll see now the activity is very different because now I've only got two lives, one, two, and also it doesn't wait for me to answer. I've got to read and very quickly before it disappears off the screen, try to find the answer to the question. And I can obviously make this go faster if I we set it at two, but we can increase the speed, for example, to be a higher speed. Now, just to show you a couple of examples here, if I don't answer this question correctly, after a certain number of seconds, the game will actually, or the word will fly away. You'll see that happened. It doesn't wait for me forever. So this is really important uh, if you want to kind of m add a more game element to, the, to it as well. Now also, if I make a mistake, so the next one here, and I click on that, that's one, I've now lost one of my lives. 
And if I play another one and also get that one incorrect, then now actually the game is over because I've made two mistakes. And remember, I only had two lives. So these settings here can be very useful. Now I want to show you some more quite important advanced features. So for this, I'm going to click on create activity and I'll do an example here of match up. Now, if I, for example, write a big clock in the middle of London, and then I'm gonna write Big Ben. It doesn't matter if you do it the opposite way around and you put the keyword uh, as the definition and the definition as a keyword, it makes no difference. What I want you to notice is this. If I click here on audio, you'll notice that the audio hasn't been added. So when we're working with a long sentence, it doesn't automatically pick up the sentence. It, you need to copy it, okay? And you can obviously copy or just press Control C, and then you need to click on the audio, you need to paste that word in, and then you need to generate the audio. A big clock in the middle of London. Then click on OK. Now, if I just show you another one, I'm just gonna write a single word, Paris. A single word, yes, the audio will kind of pick up the text and you just generate Paris. it. But if it's a longer sentence, you often have to write it in. Now, another thing is sometimes you might like to add in your own voice, and this is also possible. So if I was to put the question, for example, how are you? But I wanted to use my own voice. What I can do is I can use a technology called Vokaroo. I'm just gonna jump over and show you Vokaroo. It's a free tool and it's very quick. So this is Vokaroo. It's on the, on the website vokaroo.com. As soon as I click on this button here, it's gonna record my voice. So I'm just gonna click and record myself saying, how are you? How are you? Perfect, I've done the recording. I can play that back. How are you? Now what I can do is I can click on share and what I can do is download that audio file. Now that's obviously been downloaded into my downloads. Now all I need to do is add that audio into WordWall. So if I come back to WordWall, and then this time I'm gonna click on add audio, but I'm gonna click on upload. And then what I will need to do is come to my downloads and hopefully there it is, there is the recording. Click on that and then open how are you? And then it's the same thing, click on OK. So now in this game, this audio is my voice. And you can do that, remember, you can use vokaroo.com. You just go to vokaroo.com, very easy website to use, okay? Very, very simple. You simply just click to record. If I just refresh it, so we come back to the opening page of vokaroo.com, one minute, just to quickly show you. Just come back to vokaroo.com and you just click on this button here. Testing, 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 one, two, three, stop. Play it to check. Testing, 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 one, two, three. And then if you wanna save that file, click on save. And remember you need to download. You have other options as well. It's quite an interesting website, but it's particularly useful, of course, to download the audio and add it into WordWall. Incidentally, if you want to know more about Vokaroo and other super, super easy audio tools, I've got a great video that I've created and you can click on it on the screen now. Now I'm going to show you some other advanced features, often things that teachers don't realize that you can do. And for this one, to make it really quick, I'm going to click on Create Activity. I'm going to create missing words. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my website and I'm just gonna copy this text. A lot of teachers don't realize you can do this. I'm gonna come back to WordWall and I'm gonna paste in that whole text. And now all I need to do to create the gap fill activity, and I'm gonna call this one gap fill, is I just simply click on the words that I want to make the gaps. So I'm gonna click on technologist, click on add, then I'm gonna click on subscribers, I'm going to click on add, I'm going to click on channel, click on add, I'm going to click on university, I'm going to click on add, uh, I'm going to click on, let's have a look here, uh, program, and click on add. Now I can also add some 
trick words. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to write the word readers. Now we know that's not in the text, but I'm adding these as additional words just to make it a little bit trickier. So this is how I can make a really quick gap fill activity. And if I click now on done, then if we click on start, you can see now the game includes those trick words and obviously the students would need to just drag the words in and hopefully be able to do this activity. Often when I do the training, teachers don't realize that you can use that particular game in that way. Now this is a really special trick that I'm going to show you and I use this a lot when I'm working with um, Wordwall. I'm going to copy here, I've got some sentences in Polish that I'm trying to study and I'm just going to copy, let's just copy the first eight sentences, so I'm just going to copy, so this could come from any list, it could be in Word, it could be in PowerPoint, it could be in anything, it's just a list of sentences or a list of words. I'm going to come back to Wordwall and I'm going to click on create activity and for this one I'm going to do unjumble. So I'm going to click on unjumble. Now what I can do, watch this, is just paste in all of those sentences all in one go. And now I have for myself an activity, and this I'm going to call this one Polish sentences. Okay, and I now have a drag activity where you have to put the words in the correct order. So notice that I can copy from a list and paste straight into Wordwall. Again, something that when I'm doing the training, often teachers don't realize that you can do. That you can also print out these um, games. Not all print options are available, a bit like the audio, where you can't all add audio to everything. But for example, this game here that we were just playing, we can actually click on match up and it's going to produce a printable copy of the game, which we can obviously then print out by just clicking here, and this then the students would obviously have to match the words by drawing a line. This could be really good, for example, if you're working in a hybrid class where some of the students are in the lesson and maybe they haven't got access to their smartphones, and they can actually do the paper-based version of the game. Now it's important to realize also that you can actually use games that other teachers have created. So if you come over to community and you can do a search for anything you want here, I'm going to put for example past simple English, so I'm looking for stuff in English, but of course it could be history, geography, whatever. And then I can, if I want to, for example, if I like the look of a game, it's always worth just quickly checking the game to make sure that you're happy with it, okay? And if you are, then you can just play that particular game with your students. So for example, let's say I wanted to part, play this one here, which is just basically working with regular and irregular. I can actually just click then on set assignment, copy that link, just as before and then give that link to my students and get them to do this activity. So working with the community can be great because it can save you a lot of time. Okay, really hope you liked that video. Please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Loads more free videos, loads of great stuff on the opening page and I normally put the latest stuff up, up here as well. Uh, my blog's at the bottom if you wanna read my blog and don't forget what I said about the newsletter. You'll get updated with all the latest blog posts, the free webinars that we run, the online courses and of course all the latest videos. But there's also a 14 part free course, no tricks, it doesn't, I don't suddenly ask you to spend any money. It's simply 14 videos that highlight different key technologies that we can use in our teaching and learning. And also on the front page, of course, you can find out about my courses. And if you are interested in perhaps me doing some training with your organization or with you as an individual, you can contact me from this uh, website. And I'm going to leave some more videos now on the screen about other interesting gaming sites for language learners.